Hey there and welcome to my channel. If you're back and you already watched some of my videos, well cool. Great to have you back. If you're new to my channel, welcome. This is a channel where I share my entire learning experience across the DevOps space with you here. I also have a public Notion page where I share all of my written notes. So check that out below and a weekly DevOps newsletter where I share free learning resources, everything free. So <laughs> check those out. Anyway, so yesterday I was looking at services from a practical perspective, setting up pods and services and making them communicate. The problem is that I realized, thanks to some of your comments as well, that I don't know enough about how the connection is set up with the ports. So I tried to find more uh, about that today. I couldn't find much good theoretical content, uh, but I found some really amazing practice um, tasks and resources that I'm going to share with you now, as well as what else I discovered about services. So let's get started. Okay, so here is again my public Notion page that I just mentioned, um, the DevOps Diary, which has a lot of more content, including the newsletters and other stuff. But I want to show you the 100 days of Kubernetes, where I have some notes and including yesterday, that's what I'm going to use now as well. Um, my pod definition and my service definition and some of the commands that you can use to play around with that, set it up and so on. Um, going back, Here's some of the notes for today, which mainly just link to some of the resources that I found. So let's dive into them. First off, we have here Kubernetes by example. I haven't checked those out yet. So that's on my list for tomorrow from OpenShift. So as you can see, you have some examples on pods, how to set up pods, um, how you can get the information about the pods and so on. Similarly, you have that for deployments and services. So some of the stuff that I've been using in the book that I'm reading right now, as well as just across those videos, you can find them here as like practical examples with explanations. So check those out. It looks really cool. And <laughs> I'm not sponsored by that. Just, just mentioning. Uh, also, I didn't know that the Kubernetes docs, I think this is the official docs. Yeah. Has really nice tutorials actually. <laughs> so at first they walk you through the theoretical content with some nice graphics and then they provide you with an interactive tutorial session where you can just play around with it and they provide you with the commands and explain them. So that's also really, really handy. Um, also I'm going to link those all below as well with the, in combination with the Notion page. And then I found by O'Reilly this really cool page with some, with a lot of different projects that you can be using from like beginner to advanced. So that is also really cool. And yeah, here's a Kubernetes cheat sheet. So if you, if you just want to play around, just learn by doing, then that's highly practical. Um, you can find a lot of really valuable resources actually on the Reddit, on the Kubernetes Reddit. Uh, so have a look at that. People share really amazing free content as well. And let's check out what happened yesterday with the pods and the services. Okay, so let's look at the resources that we actually used yesterday. It's the same one. It's the same um, deployment definition as well as the uh, service definition that we used yesterday. So here I want to set up a deployment that has a replica set with two replicas of this, of these containers. And these containers are supposed to be running each in one pod. Um, and I want to access those containers or those uh, running pods. And through defining a container port, here in this case I'm setting it to 80, um, it should give me access to it. More on that in a second. Um, so here I have my, just my container image, the name, and then the container port, and when it should receive the image, when it should pull the new image. Anyway, so within the service, yesterday I didn't actually set up the service that I, that I showed. I set up the same kind of service of type cluster IP, however, with uh, just using kubectl and then expose. And that's how I could just create a service for if case, in case that deployment was running, I could just create a service through this command. However, I don't want to be doing that right now. Instead, I want to create a new service that I defined here of type node port. Now you can have cluster AP, node port or load balancer as your service type. Um, more on the differences in a second. Um, but the, main, the important part here is that I have a section called ports. Now I could just go ahead and call it one port 
call it 80 and then it would just uh, choose the target port and the node port in the node port case it would just choose an arbitrary node port within this range of 30,000 to 30,000 something. In this case, I define all of the ports. Now you don't necessarily want to do that if you're not having like a more complex um, application. If you have a more complex application, you want to use Ingress and other tools and resources to manage those. So this is just purely for learning reasons, I guess. <laughs> okay, so we have the port. Now this, so what happens here is we have our, we have our pods running within our um, nodes, running within our cluster. Now we have here, um, you want to access those somehow. The, the containers, the pods that can be accessed through port 80. So the service knows, hey, uh, forward request to port 80. Then we have here, in this case, we have the port of our service. How can we access the service? How can other resources within the cluster access the service? And that's through 8080. And then we have next our node port. How can any resources outside of um, our cluster access the cluster? Now, the thing is, if you create a node port, it has all of the benefits of a cluster AP, plus it's, uh, you can make resources accessible to the outside. Now, the way everything is implemented highly depends on what kind of Kubernetes cluster you're running as well. In the case yesterday, I had a cluster of type cluster IP, so I shouldn't be able to access it from outside. I shouldn't be able to access my application from the outside, but I was able to do that. <laughs> so I, you like, it was just my case, probably because I'm running it on micro case. I tried it on Google Cloud, similar stuff. It, it doesn't work. You can't access your cluster if it doesn't have um, the IP like port exposed through node port for ingress through something else. Um, so in this case, you basically um, ping your resource, ping the service through 8080. Um, yeah, it's the protocol TCP. Um, that's the name. <laughs> and that's that's what you use. So I can now go ahead and create this deployment. So I go kubectl create and then I specify the deployment. So it creates a deployment. Now you want to make sure that the pods are running before you proceed with something else. So we're going to wait first. First one is running and the second one is running. Awesome. Um, now you have them both running, which is great. Um, but we want to set up our service now. The service knows what parts it and yeah, what other resources it has to communicate with through those labels. Here, run React application, and we have the same thing. Let's label run React application, and that's how the part the service knows how what parts what resources it's responsible for. So if I want to, <laughs> if I want to set up the service, I'm going to do it also through a similar command to call create service. Um, oh, we'll create F and then the service name, the file. So it's created now. I can say um, kubectl get services. And I can see here my React application service of type node port. You can see here the other one is of type IP cluster IP, like yesterday. And in that case, we don't have the port of the node port in, the, in this case. In this case of our of the service we just created, we do have that. Um, so we can go ahead and take our cluster IP that's also created um, through, through creating the node port. And we can go ahead and open this up. So if I just go ahead and use this, use the, the IP of our cluster, we, there's nothing going to happen. But if I add 8080 at the end of the service, it now knows uh, that it's getting pinged and it can forward us um, to either of the pods. Now, something else that's quite interesting is if I say kubectl describe and then um, service react application. Oh, you can't really see it. Let's move this a bit up. Well, um, or a bit over here. So 
that should be easier to see. Um, so in this case, we have here endpoints. And as you can see, here's the endpoint um, of, of those pods. And then they have basically an endpoint IP and then the port. Um, so I could just go ahead in either of them and open them up as well. And that's what I did yesterday, basically. That's what I did. However, that's not really beneficial because you're not really using the service. And if you want to be using the service, um, you should configure the access differently. Because if I now go ahead and say, um, what were our pods? Keep kind of. Here's a dog of a hang on. So if I want to just, if I were to delete this part, it's running, it's perfectly healthy, but what if something happens to them? Um, oh no. So we're just gonna go ahead and delete it. And now it's being deleted. Let's wait a second until it's finished. So let's check if it has been uh, delete it. As we can see, the part that we just want to delete is terminating, meaning it's being deleted, it's being closed off, kapush from Kubernetes. And now we can see that there's another part that just has been created in its place. So we specified here in the replica set, we want to have always two parts of this instance, of this um, container instance running. So it just, it realized, oh, this part is gonna die now. We have to spin up a new part. So as you can see, it's right now 40 seconds old. Um, and that's basically life healing kind of the parts. But the problem is now, if we say, if we go again, kubectl describe service and we get our service, we will have different endpoints here. So these endpoints here are not the same one. Let's compare them. We have here, we have four, and here we have a six. Um, both leading to port 80. So, I mean, the four is still there, um, but it's it's a different, trust me, it's a different endpoint. So those endpoints are um, created and deleted and created and deleted with, with the pods, like they will all, they will all have a different um, IP. So this is it for today. I hope it was useful. If it was and you made it this far, it must be that you are really curious about Kubernetes and you want to learn more. So join our DevOps learning group. To join, just message me on Twitter and I can add you to that. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed this content, give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments, suggestions, any feedback, anything you want to see across the next um, 88 days, <laughs> then please do let me know in the comments as well. I would love to hear from you. Have a lovely day and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.